Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be going through this report by Cloudera Fast Forward Labs, which is on few shot X classification. This was released around in December 2020. So talking in general about few shot learning, the idea is pretty straightforward as the name suggests. How do you do any task, in this case text classification, if you don't have a lot of labeled data by yourself? You might already know, right? Getting labeled data is a painful and expensive process and also requires a lot of time and effort. So instead, can we have a mechanism where we use, let's say, five to 10 samples per class and have a model with decent performance? So that's the entire idea of few short learning paradigm. So the report starts by laying out an outline to what we are going to discuss. So they discuss about the embeddings model and a little improved version to perform a little better in zero short learning scenarios. And then how we can incorporate some data in the same technique to even improve it further. So here we'll get to know about how to do one shot, followed by how we can extend that one shot to capture a couple of more labeled examples to make it few short. Then we'll see the validation of these approaches by applying them on certain data sets. So here they use a news data set and Reddit data set, where Reddit data set is supposed to be classified into 10 classes for a given text whereas news had four classes then they talk about how to interpret the results some of the limitations and conclusion cool so let's move forward so yeah officially they also state what a few short learning means so few short learning for classification is a scenario in which there is a small amount of labeled data for all the labels in the model is expected to recognize so for example if you're doing a classification for let's say science, entertainment, politics, and sports. So given a news, you want to classify in either of these classes. So what few short learning demands is like you have some number of examples per class of this that's labeled by human. So for example, you might have let's say two examples for this, two for this, two for this, and two for this. Also in few short learning terminology, you can call it as N way K short where n would mean how many classes do you have which in our case are four so this would be four ways and then how many examples do you have for each of those class which is k short so let's say we have two over here so this will be two short so four way two short is what the example i'm talking about and this is a usual way how you would find it in literature so the goal is for the model to generalize to the unseen examples in the same categories both quickly and effectively cool so now let's say if i have a news article then the idea is whether this goes to this 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 or this so either of these four is what i have to assign for this new article okay cool so talking about latent text embeddings so this is a pretty common thing that you'll find in like people using across all the nlp projects now which is about passing in a text to get a dense vector representation in some semantic space that captures the closeness of words or phrases or sentences for that matter at a semantic level. But one of the interesting thing that this report says is to also utilize the label embeddings, which we saw, right? Let's say if we had science and technology, business, and all of these terms, right? So a typical way of classifying any document into these categories would be to take in a text, embed this through word, word to vec, universal sentence encoder, any of those techniques, then pass it through a neural network and have a softmax layer to kind of classify into one of n categories to what you had. So here the function that we're essentially learning is to map your input to your output. That's the function that we're learning. And here model exactly doesn't know the semantics of each of these labels. It just understands the semantic of the input that we're trying to give it to. And this technique works pretty well when you have large amount of label data. But in the case of FSL, since we are in the crunch of having a lot of label data, so why not utilize the representation of the labels that we have? Because those also have a semantic associated to them. So if you see science and tech, right, it gives you a certain information already. Like what is the domain that are we talking about, which is what we were missing in a typical pipeline. So the point is to utilize these things as well. For example, business. So if I say the word business and if I say the word science and tech, 
you as a human would be able to comprehend and say okay we are talking about something that is different right so that's the thought that we want to embed while doing this fsl modeling so the idea is pretty clear so what they do is the first cut that they propose is like you embed your text and labels in a same semantic space let's say we use bird or sentence bird and let's say this is your document b1 this is your document b2 and similarly you also label let's say all the categories to what you have and you have let's say science and technology you pass this phrase through the bird or sentence bird model and this is the vector that you get this is science and tech and similarly for business let's say this is the vector what you get business now the idea is now you get a new document b3 let's say you pass it through the same model so that you land up in the same semantic space and let's say this is the vector that we are talking about now calculate the closeness of this vector to each of these blue vectors which are there in that space and whichever is the closest is the label what you want to assign to this new document that's the pretty simple idea and also it makes sense right because the document would be kind of an expansion in the domain of science and tech so it would ideally be close to the label or the descriptive label of that field right and not be close to something that's a little different which in this case is business cool so this is the first approach that they propose so on this if you see the results yeah so this green color bar is the results of the classification where ag news had four classes and reddit had 10 classes to classify each document into we are getting close to 50 percent for news and close to 40 percent for the reddit so that's again not a very bad accuracy in that terms because if you see right one by four if you select anything at random out of this you're getting roughly close to 20 percent performance with this technique and having no data at all we are reaching close to 50 percent and that's really cool and similarly for reddit it would be like one by ten which is ten percent is a random chance accuracy for choosing any of those 10 categories and here we're getting roughly 4x of that so that's really impressive but the question is can we improve further and to that they answer yes and the second thing that they propose is what they call as zmap and that's because so they use sentence bird for embedding both of their words as well as sentences but ideally if you see right sentence bird was trained on pair of sentences saying if these are similar or not so it understands little longer context compared to word to wick is more optimized to get representation of words whereas sentence word is more optimized to get representation of sentences so with their technique where they are using s bird or sentence bird for both words and sentences this looks pretty odd because in ideal scenario what they have written what you would want is that you embed words using word to wick and sentences or longer contextual things using sentence word and then somehow do a cosine similarity between these representation but that is a problem right because word to wick will kind of project and get you an embedding in some hypothetical 300 dimension whereas sentence word is again going to get you a representation in some hypothetical 768 dimension so those are not quite the same space where we are projecting things these are two different spaces so somehow we need to embed them in one common embedding space to make the distance logic which we discussed in the first part also if you see word to wick space the words that have the same semantic sense are pretty much close to each other whereas if the same words are passed through sentence word they found these to be scattered across the plane so for the second part we have seen the problem and the solution for that is to let's embed each of them in the same space and for that we'll have to learn a function which they call as zmap where they say okay let's use sentence word representation but ultimately learn a function that would project those representation to one common space so for example if you have a sentence you pass it through s word you get 768 dimension representation you have a word or the label essentially or this could be a phrase which is let's say science and technology you again pass through the same sentence word model you get a 768 
dimension representation. Now these are in the same space, so we can do the cosine similarity or any kind of distance metric. But since we saw right, Wartovic gives an extra leverage in terms of knowing word level semantics. So let's learn a function that would take this and this and transform it to a common space where again such similarity function calculation is possible. Now how do you learn this z function is the question. So that can again be done without manually labeling any of those data sets. So what they do is they pick top k words from the word to work vocabulary and pass it through sentence word and get their representation of 768 dimension. They pass these words through word to work as well and get a 300 dimension representation. So now what we have is for a word we have a 768 dimension representation. We also have a 300 dimension representation. So we learn a neural network that will take in this as an input and compress it to a 300 dimension representation. So this is the function what they call as Zmap. So with this we wrap the second technique to what the authors propose and let's see the result for these. Okay, so the orange bar that you see is the sentence word representation transformed by the z function. So we see right, we get a boost from 50 to roughly 65% for the AG News dataset, although for Reddit we see a little decline. So in this report, they have put some hypothesis or the reasons to why this might be happening. We'll get to those details as we proceed in those sections. Okay. So till now, whatever we have seen is with respect to if you have no data at all and you want to learn a classification function. But what if now you have some data? Okay, so again, this is a mathematical equation. If you don't have any data and the Zmap part what we discussed, you have a document B. You pass it through Zbird, you multiply it with the Z matrix, and then you calculate some kind of similarity here, the U is cosine, and whichever label gets the highest cosine similarity, or, or in other words, is closest to the document D, is what you choose as your final label. Cool, so now talking about if we have a bit of a label data that's present with us, then how do we go about extending the existing techniques with also leveraging some of the extra supervised information? So this is a typical linear regression equation with the L2 regularizer where the idea of W is to push this X to its label Y. But what the authors strongly believe that the representation that they've got which is sentence word multiplied by the Zmap representation which takes them to a all new hyperspace is already good enough. So now if they want to incorporate a bit of a label data, they don't want it to kind of overpower the initial representation to what they had. So for that they modify the regularizer term and make it as W minus identity matrix L2 norm with which now we train your supervised model with given takes chunks and its label with whatever number of samples you have per label. W will most likely be close to an identity matrix which when multiplied by the initial representation till now to what we had which is this one will not be overpowered and will just be tweaked a little bit. So with this we have a new way of how we also incorporate label data which is you have your initial representation of the document from sentence bird you have your initial representation of the label from sentence bird you apply zmap to project them in a same hyperspace you further multiply by the w matrix that does a translation in that newer hyperspace in order to make d and l little closer to each other based on a little bit of supervised information in terms of labels and text associations to what they had and then again you finally take the cosine similarity and for a given document whichever label is the closest is what you choose okay so now if we see the results for this yeah so clearly we can see a bump for both the data sets that they're evaluating on and the newer version where we also incorporate the label data reaches close to 80 percent for ag news and roughly 50 percent for reddit but clearly we can see the power of incorporating this label data because the numbers have shot enough from 50 to 80. Also the reason for an average accuracy for AG news which is roughly close to 60 to 65 percent 
which is far better than something close to 30-35% for Reddit. For this, what they've said is like, the sentence word and all of these word models are trained on a large amount of openly available data sets that usually come from news. So when evaluating on the similar domain, which is AG News, the performance numbers are decent enough. Unlike when you evaluate on 10 categories, what they did for in the case of Reddit, which is exactly not the domain on which the sentence word operates. But again, incorporating a language model that gives out a representation if you pre-train again on some domain data sets on which you're trying to do the final prediction should definitely improve the accuracy but in general the technique of incorporating sentence word followed by a z-map of translating it to a common space and then if you have any labeled data available then also adding the weight for that is one of the optimal approach for the propose in this section cool so one of the takeaways and the things that to remember is like the labels have to be meaningful because you saw right we are passing label through sentence word to get its representation and that's one of the major semantics that we are adding into understanding what labels actually mean so if the labels are not well defined then all of the things that we are doing go for a toss because then this representation won't be proper and then comparing it against let's say the document representation of word wouldn't make sense at all so it's a good exercise i believe to granularize your labels and make them a little more descriptive and narrowed down so that it's easy for the model to make this discrimination while doing the similarity stuff cool so yeah i think now we're done with the paper so if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit that like button also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye take care and stay safe